Welcome to Metabolisms and Bioenergetics Part 4. Um, in this video lecture, we're going to look at how carbohydrates and fats and oils ultimately end up producing ATP in our body. It's kind of a grand finale of everything that we've learned so far this semester. Let's get started. Alrighty, so um, we don't have enough time to get to proteins, so we'll just focus on fats and oils and carbohydrates, right? So with fats and oils, we have our triglycerides. And so the first thing that's going to need to happen, right, is we're going to use our lipase enzyme and water and do hydrolysis. And we talked a lot about um, what's going on there, and I'm not going to review that right now. Um, you have the videos. Um, the important thing, though, to focus on here is that we end up with fatty acids. And these fatty acids always have an even number of carbons. All right? And so this spiral is representing beta oxidation. All right? Because we use a spiral instead of a circle because each time there's a turn of the beta oxidation, right? There is a two carbon loss forming acetyl-CoA. So here's our acetyl-CoA right here. Okay, so as this fatty acid goes through the beta oxidation cycle, each time it does a turn, each turn of the beta oxidation, right, is going to produce um, one FADH2 and one NADH, right? And one acetyl-CoA. Oops, CoA. Okay, good enough. And then remember, on the last turn, right, the last turn um, gives two acetyl-CoA. Alrighty, and so really the emphasis here is thinking about the fats and the oil or the carbohydrates and ultimately how many acetyl-CoA are produced. Because we know, right, that the acetyl group from the acetyl-CoA, right, and the sulfur's there, sometimes they show it, sometimes they don't, right? So there's our acetyl group, so there's the two carbons that enter the citric acid cycle. So the real emphasis on looking at the energy production of our food is how many reduced coenzymes come out and how many acetyl-CoA. So the reduced coenzymes can go directly to the electron transport chain. The acetyl-CoA is converted into the reduced coenzymes to enter the electron transport chain. So let's get, um, so now let's look at carbohydrates and let's get everybody to acetyl-CoA, right? So now, looking at this sugar, ideally, you it's easy to see that that's glucose. You've memorized your sugars. And then the process of one glucose going to two pyruvates, right? Here's our buddy pyruvate. Right? Um, so that, what's that process called? Okay, so glucose, one glucose forming two pyruvates, that is called glycolysis. And remember, that takes place in the cytoplasm, or cytosol of the cell, and so no mitochondria are needed. So during glycolysis, we learned that in addition to the two pyruvates, we get a net gain of two ATP and two NADHs, right? So here's some energy produced right away, and then here is some more reduced coenzymes that can go directly into the electron transport chain. Now, for the pyruvate to be converted into acetyl-CoA, two additional NADH are produced. In the aerobic environment, the pyruvate can be converted into our buddy acetyl-CoA, 
And then here are the two carbons of acetyl-CoA that will enter the citric acid cycle. All right, so now um, we've put together all the pieces and we understand how our food is breaking down and forms acetyl-CoA, which can enter the citric acid cycle, which we've studied very care carefully before. So um, here we get, right, our NADH. We get a couple of those. We get an FADH2 here and another NADH, right? And then there's our GTP, which is easily converted to ATP. So it's these reduced coenzymes, right, that enter the citric acid cycle, or excuse me, the electron transport chain, right? Reduced coenzymes, right? Those enter the electron transport chain, some oxygen is needed, and we get ATP. And so um, from our previous video, we learned that for one acetyl-CoA, we can generate 12 ATP, right? And um, one NADH can give us three ATP, and one FADH2 can give us two ATP, all right? So we have reduced coenzymes being produced directly from beta oxidation and glycolysis. And then we have additional reduced coenzymes formed when this acetyl-CoA enters the citric acid cycle. So now, on the last page of our notes, we're going to put this all together and do a calculation of our ATP yields. All right, let's start with glucose, right? So glucose has a very simple chemical formula, C6H12O6. And when we studied glycolysis, we learned that there's a net gain of two ATP. And so that's just two ATP straight across. And that we also um, produced from each glucose, right? So glucose goes to two pyruvates. And that produces two acetyl-CoA. Right? And in this process of the glycolysis, we get two NADHs here, right? And so from the previous page, right, we know we times that by three, so we get six. And then we get another two NADHs when the pyruvate becomes acetyl-CoA. So then we times that by three, we get another six there. And so from one glucose, we would end up with two acetyl-CoA, right? And we have learned that from each acetyl-CoA, right, that would be times 12. We get 12 ATP from each. So we get the two acetyl-CoAs times 12, and that's 24. So when we add this all up, we would get 38 ATP produced from one glucose. Now, um, don't get too attached to this number. When you start looking through different textbooks and different resources, they'll say anywhere from 32 to 38 are reported. And typically, 36 is the most common answer. And I think the reason for that is because there are six carbons, right? So if we have 36 ATP and we started with six carbons, we could see that we get six ATP per carbon, right, in the glucose. All right, so let's compare the energy production of glucose to the energy production of one fatty acid, right? Because we always talk about how fats, right, there's more calories in fats than carbohydrates. Now we're going to know why. All righty. So here, let's look at myristic acid. Right, so there's 12, 13, 14. So this is a 14 carbon fatty acid. All righty, so we need to think about what we've learned about beta oxidation, all right? So how many turns 
are going to be needed, right? There's gonna, we're gonna need six turns of the beta oxidation. And from those six turns, right, acetyl-CoA, think of that as a two carbon, right? So how many sets of two can we get from 14? So we're gonna get seven acetyl-CoA. Because whenever we think about acetyl-CoA, we want to think of it as this two-carbon handoff unit. All righty. So, from the beta oxidation, we have six turns. That means we're going to get six FADH2s and six NADHs. Those come from the turns of the beta oxidation. And then, we're going to get seven acetyl-CoA's because these are two carbon units and we have 14 carbons all together. However, at the beginning to initiate beta oxidation, right, activation of the beta oxidation actually consumes, let me use a different color here, it consumes two ATP because we take an AT, ATP goes to AMP, so we count that as a two, right? So that's why we have a minus here, minus two. All right, um, yeah, okay, I think that'll work. All right, now, remember what I talked about with, um, right, FADHs, they each produce two ATP. So if we had six, and each of those is gonna produce two ATP all together, that would be 12. And then the NADHs, remember that those would give us three ATP. So six times three would be 18. And then, right, the acetyl-CoA's, those each produce 12, all right? So seven times 12 is 84. So we add these all up, subtract two, and we get 112 ATP, right? So we get a lot more energy. All right, so this could be a little misleading though because we started with a lot more carbons. So yeah, fats are more, fats, you know, we get more calories from fats than we do carbohydrates, but we need to normalize this for the carbons. So we have 112 ATP, but initially, right, we had 14 carbons. So when we do the math here, it basically goes to eight ATP, per carbon, which is, right, which is 33% more, right? So that's 33% more ATP per carbon than glucose. So back at the very, for exam one, we were studying the calories from our food, and we noticed that we get, there are more calories per grams of fat then there are carbohydrates, and here is the underlying biochemical reason why. Alrighty, well this wraps up our video series on um, metabolism and bioenergetics. This would be a great time to work your post-video practice problems.